Hi, this is Ed Smith of Universal Digest. I'm here with Lester Moon, founder of Hands in the Community. This Christian ministry has been helping people of all ages and stations of life in our community. Lester, after our last meeting two days ago, I walked away fascinated you know, uh, at what you told me. Could you please share with our viewers how Hands in the Community started, what is happening presently, and where we're headed in the future? Yes, Ed, I can do that. Um, Hands in the Community started a little over 11 years ago. I got invited to a meeting with a couple of, uh, well, a couple hundred people at the Visay Convention Center. And they're people from all walks of life, from pastors to community leaders to the police chief. And each one of them had a concern about how the community was growing and there was a lack of networking and communications with all these organizations that were trying to help people. So as a result, I walked up after the meeting and asked the police chief if I could, if I could help him by putting together a group of volunteers and networking in the community. He said, wow, you could do that? And I said, well, I actually did that 25 years ago in the San Francisco Bay Area. So Hands in the Community started literally that night and from that day forward, that's what our uh, goal has been, is to try and connect people, businesses, churches, service clubs, you name it, to help people. And it's pretty simple, pretty basic in for, you know, how we do this. One volunteer says, I want to be able to uh, fix something, and we put them in the database. One youth group says, we can go out and clean a yard, and we put them in our database. And businesses and, and um you know, professionals even, doctors, dentists, plumbers, carpenters. So when we started in January of 2009, we had one volunteer. <laughs> we now have over 1,200 volunteers. And those are volunteers throughout Tulare County, Kings County, and we actually go into Fresno County, um, Reedley, and uh, Kingsburg. So our goal is to help people who need assistance but are stuck in certain situations where they can't help themselves. They're either a single mom, they might be an older couple, they might be elderly, might be disabled, and they just don't know where to go to get assistance. So our goal is to provide people to help other people. We don't provide any other kind of service, meaning we're not a food pantry, clothing closet, or soup kitchen. We are people helping people. And uh, if I could share maybe a couple of uh, stories, the most uh, impactful stories that I can share. One was Anna, who was a uh, mother of a service uh, club president. I went and did a presentation at his club one day, and about four or five weeks later, she reached out to our uh, organization and said she needed help. And Anna lived alone. She was a widow and uh, needed some trees cut down and... Uh, I mean, these weren't little trees, these were 30 foot trees. So we got in some tree surgeons and we descended on Anna's property on a Saturday morning at 7.30 with 29 people from nine different churches. And we were cleaning up, we were cutting down the trees, we were moving things. And at lunchtime, Anna approached me and she said, Lester, I wanna know what's going on here. And I said, is everything okay? She said, yeah, it just amazes me that this group of people are doing more than I asked for. There's no fighting, there's no cussing. How long have they been working together? I said, Anna, we just met this morning at 7.30. And so throughout the day, we were able to move uh, six quarter wood and complete the project. And inevitably, uh, Anna volunteered for Hands in the Community. So that's just one, uh, one of the early on projects that we did, and by the way, to give you an idea of the kind of projects and the numbers, our first year we did only six projects. Last year we did 171 projects. And then even that might sound impressive, however, we're averaging 30 projects a month now. If you multiply that out to 12 months, that's 360 projects, which is double in one year what we have been able to accomplish. And we don't do this alone. 450 businesses, 1,100, 1,200 volunteers, service clubs, uh, high school kids. I mean, you name it, they, they've been able to offer assistance. One other story I will share with you that really tugged at my heart, and we'll just use her name, it's Althea. By the way, none of these names are the names of our clients. Understood. Althea called <clears throat> us and asked us for assistance. She said her house was dark, and she lived in a part of town that was 
probably a little bit, um, you know, what should I say, seedy. You know, you're, you're not sure you trust your neighbors. And she was a widow, uh, lived in an 850 square foot home. I would call it a, a little cottage kind of thing. And, and she had five rooms. And in each room, at, uh, at the center of the room was a wire. At the end of the wire was a light bulb. So she was calling to say her house was dark and we thought it was her power, you know, she didn't pay her utility bill or maybe something wrong with the bro breakers. No, it was something as simple as each light bulb was, uh, was blowing out and she moved to the next room, the next room, the next room. She was down to one light bulb. And think about this, she's 81 years old, she has arthritis, she's not gonna get up on a chair, she'd break her neck and she didn't trust her neighbors, she didn't belong to a church or a service club in her her closest family were over 200 miles away. So she found out from a friend and that friend referred her to us. It took longer for Mark, the volunteer, to drive over there and fix it than it did to actually put the light bulbs in. And so the day that was supposed to happen on a Thursday, she's calling us Thursday afternoon and uh, she's concerned, she was crying and we were concerned that maybe Mark did not show up. Maybe he couldn't make it, something happened. Because that's that does happen with our volunteers in many cases. Well, no, Mark showed up. Well, Althea, uh, you're crying. Did he replace the light bulbs? Did he fix the, the, the issue? Yes, he did. Well, Althea, you're still crying. And this is her words. She said, Mark gave me back my home and my life for four light bulbs. Eight, eight bucks, 10 bucks maybe. But wow. she was able to stay in her home. So we're, we're not doing anything really magical here. We're just equipping volunteers and groups to go out and help people like Althea and Anna. And that is what we do each and every day. In fact, we, we do a project almost every day now as we're averaging 30 a month. And so that's a lot of things that we do for people. So we know that without your help, financial help and your help with volunteering, we couldn't continue to do it. So the biggest challenge we have before us is now we're in our 11th year, more people are hearing about us. That's the good news. That's also the bad news because more people are hearing about us. <laughs> and so when we go into, say, a mobile home park and uh, paint one of the mobile homes or build a ramp, everybody's saying, hey, how did you get that done? Who did that for you? And then the word gets around and people start sharing and that's, uh, we end up with two or three or more, um, more clients in that mobile home park. So that's the biggest challenge we have going forth here as an organization, not having enough volunteers in the community, not even actually having enough volunteers in the office. Uh, we run pretty lean. We have uh, one paid full-time director, two part-time office managers, and then everybody else are volunteers. We have interns from local universities. Uh, we have kids from high schools that help us. Um, we have. Well, let me put it this way. If you, our youngest volunteer was 13, our oldest volunteer was 81. Amazing. So if you fall into that age bracket, then you can help us. So uh, with that said, uh, I would just say, um, whatever you can do to help us, share this video, uh, encourage others to, to take a look at it. And I want to thank Ed and uh, his organization for believing in what we do. Well, thank you, Lester. Actually, you and I have been friends for many years in right. different venues over the community's time. And I, I'm compelled, I, I'm really compelled to do what I can to help. Um, and through the website, Universal Digest, uh, the word will get out. Many, many people will see it. Thank and you. Your, your, anything else or any plans for the future that you might have? Well, uh, I'll just share that in this one building, we operate for ministry. So Hands of the Committee is kind of the call center. We provide a program called uh, Kids for the King, mm -hmm. and that's after school programs. And there are probably 40, 42 of those programs going on in uh, Tulare County and, and into Kings County. We have senior care, which speaks for itself. We're helping seniors and we're helping them stay in their homes. We're helping them kind of plan their, their you know, at the end of life, how they can manage things like that. And then we have uh, biblical counseling, where we provide counseling for uh, single people, for couples, for families. And then uh, finally, we have the, uh, 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 what do we have? 
Well, you did the senior care, and you have one where you're actually looking for a director now. Oh, okay, yes, Sons that's Hope. Sons of Hope. So, yes, thank you for reminding me that. We, it's on the back burner because we don't have a director for that, but that's to help young men, and we are particularly focused on 16 to 24-year-old young men to help them get out of gangs. Now, Excellent. this is a program we actually borrowed from uh, Fresno, which has a program that's been going on now for more than 20 years uh, called Hope Now for the Youth. So we're, we're applying that uh, kind of template here in uh, Tulare County. So if we can help people in, in Tulare County, I mean, if they're helping people in Fresno, we certainly can do the same thing here. Well, this is certainly all about improving the human condition and it can never get enough help. Yeah. So uh, Lester, I'm, I'm honored to be able to provide this and we'll do what I can to uh, help report your organization, your okay. ministries. Yes. And it is definitely a fine Christian ministry. Thank you. And um, God bless every one of you. All uh, right. And, and the Saltzmans, too, I understand, have been very helpful to yes, provide. Yes, they, they, have, they have actually provided this building to allow us to have all these different ministries under one roof instead of having them out in the community under different venues. So, yes. Well, then. So thank you. Thank you to everybody who's watching this video and share the video. Certainly will. And thank you very much for talking to us today. Okay.